Today we're gonna to try something you guys have been asking me to do for a while. Dying and dipping ramen noodles. We know they can be put in resin. We've seen it. I, I watched a video where the guy made a guitar out of them. Uh, but that's not what you've asked me to do. You've asked me to dye them. And so I thought the best way to do that would be with stabilizing resin. The last time we dyed stuff with stabilizing resin, it was these dried out corn cobs that I had. And that was just with a fabric dye. It was like a writ kind of fabric dye. I don't know why I was surprised to find out that they make actual dye for stabilizing resin. And so I bought some of that. I bought a new bottle of cactus juice stabilizing resin, and I bought some stabilizing dyes. All right, so stabilizing resin, um, unlike casting resin, is a resin you can use over and over and over again. But you do have to activate it. And in order to do that, it comes with this activator. So you make sure you get it all out. And then it's, oh, there we go, just this white milkish stuff. Is there any left inside? It looks pretty clean. Shake up the whole bottle. And I picked out some big plastic containers here, and I guess I should have checked to see if they fit. Um, sort of do, they sort of do, I think that's good enough. I uh, just raided the kitchen cabinet. I've got one pork flavored and two chicken flavored. It really is interesting material. It's so densely packed in there. You know, so this is completely dried noodles. And so I don't even know if stabilizing resin is going to do anything. You know, I don't know how much air is going to be in here. Because it, it won't fill in the spaces in between the noodles. It's not a casting resin. It doesn't do it that way. Pump all the air out. And then, then when you release the vacuum, the resin rushes into all the places where the air was. At the very least, my gut says that it will dye it. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of dyed stabilizing resin. We definitely have to find some more things to dye after this. All right, so these were the different dyes that I bought. Um, so I've got extreme pink, emerald green, and electric blue, which is giving me a 1980s mullet vibe. If you haven't seen Ice House electric blue and you want to you want to spot a fine mullet, this is the video to check out. Extreme pink, emerald green and electric blue. That is like neon pink. I feel like we're going into Wicked here. Oh yeah, this is cool. Look at that. It's hard to even tell the green from the blue. Green, blue. Green, blue. On the camera, it looks just the opposite to me. This looks more green and that looks more blue. That looks pink. Definitely wanted to get that on camera, but I kind of wish that I would just been able to put these in empty because it's a little bit more tricky here. I'm doing this all for you guys, just so you know. If I was by myself, I wouldn't go through all this hassle. You go in the pink, go in the blue, go in the green. So the last time I used weights like this, ended up welding them together. I don't know if I feel like firing up the welder right now. So I'm going to go for a low-tech solution. And I'm just going to put a couple in some sandwich bags. And we'll just do our little saddle trick. Like that. There we go. Yeah, that's going to work. I do realize what I'm making here. And uh, I know it is, it is unfortunate but I think it's going to be effective. Those yeah. are the logistics out of the way. Let's start pumping the air out. Uh, this on, this on, turn that on. Oh, right. I always forget which levers to go where. All right, there we go. We're starting to pull a vacuum and all those bubbles are air. We're almost at a full vacuum. And 
The bubbles don't appear to be cresting the surface. And our little weird soups are bubbling away with our bolt end sacks holding down the ramen. I like pretty pictures. I'm going to post it to my Instagram. Whenever I, whatever the number of hours I say, it never ends up being that quick. It's usually much longer. So if I say it's going to take five hours, it's usually more like uh, 15 or something absurd like that. So I'm going to guess six hours. I'll come back and check this at 7 o'clock tonight. All right, so it turns out I was wrong. I know that'll become a shock to many of you who have come to rely on my steadfast rightness over the years. Uh, it is 3.30, so it's been two and a half hours, and uh, we're done with bubbles. Bubbles are all gone. No more bubbles. It's not bubbling. So that's, that's, that's fine, I guess. Uh, it might not be a great sign for how well it worked, but um, I think it's going to die no matter what. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the pump. Whew. And then I'm going to release the vacuum. And what that's going to do is every place that there was air before, we have now allowed resin to rush in. Basically, you just let it sit in here. Since at the end of the day, what I really want is I want to dye these, I'm just going to let it sit overnight. And so I can have a look at these tomorrow morning. All right, these have sat overnight. And we are ready for the next step, which is to cook them in the oven. I like the way these colors are blending together. That's actually really neat looking. I like these colors together. I'm just going to wrap each one of these up in aluminum foil. Like a weird little to-go order. So we don't want the excess resin that's trapped between the pieces. All we care about is the resin that's stored inside the pores of the material here. That blue is just stellar. All right, and then they just go in the toaster oven for about 45 minutes at 200 and, 200 and something degrees. 200 and something degrees. Bottle those up, put them aside for some other project. Any structural integrity that the stabilizing gave it is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But what I really care about is whether or not it's dyed. There's no white in the center. It's pink all the way through. That's what we were hoping for. Dyed ramen. We did it. Now what? Now I made knife scales a couple years ago for Jimmy Duresta, but I've never actually fit scales on a knife before. And I don't have any knife making skills. So I went on to Amazon and bought a knife kit and then it said, I see you bought a knife kit. Would you also like to buy casting mold? And I said, yes, I would love to buy a casting mold for knife scales. Oh, it's bigger than I thought it was. Uh oh. All right. So here's the knife and that's my ramen. As you can see, it's, um, I mean, if it works, it'll be a super tight fit. All right, maybe, okay. Oh, that one didn't break very evenly at all. Blue and pink broke really nice. Green, um, not so much. Okay, I made a decision and we're just gonna go with it. I'm going to save this mold for another day when I've got materials that fit better into uh, it. For now, I want to maximize the ramen. Uh, for the resin, we're going to go with Total Boat High Performance Resin. How much do we need? I don't know. Let's mix up a bunch, see if it's enough. We'll start with, there you go, that's 8 ounces. I don't know, 
I don't actually have any ramen facts for you. Oh, I do know a fact about elephants. Do you know if you took every elephant and strung them from here to the moon, that, um, well, a lot of those elephants would die. Yeah, because they can't, they can't breathe in space. And, oh, I guess I could have easily told you how many ounces. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I think it's going to be a lot of resin. I don't know why I didn't take that out. There it goes. Bon voyage. Um, yeah, it's going to need more than eight ounces. All right, that's 10 ounces. We'll just do solid 12 ounces. That'll be a 20 ounce total. And most knife scales uh, need to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. And in millimeters, that's, I don't know, I have no idea. Hey Siri, what's 3 eighths of an inch thick in millimeters? 0.38 inches is 9.53 Okay, so like 10 millimeters is what it's going to be. Um, I'm just wasting time here because it takes three minutes to stir. And most of the time, I edit this, but I feel like maybe I'll keep it. I don't know. Maybe I won't. So all I need to do is just cover this. And frankly, it's pretty close to being covered already. Here's the weird part. Either this is going to work and be the best idea I've had all day, or it's going to be a disaster and everything will stick to each other. That's it. That's our fancy pants mold. A couple of stacked total boat containers. Fifty PSI. Oh, that's going fast. Okay. And now we wait. You all know the drill. We'll see. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, <laughs> it didn't stick to the container. This one looks perfect. <laughs> Definitely not my best idea. I guess you just double stick tape them together, I think is what the next step said. As as there's enough material to remove. And there goes the line, I cannot see it anymore. That's as much as I can do at the bandsaw because anytime I start to get an intricate cut, it's just covered in these little resin shavings. Uh, it's definitely closer. We're definitely looking like handles. This is a, a long process. Hopefully not going to mess this all up. Wait a minute, was I supposed to do the pins? For those keeping track, the answer is yes. I was totally supposed to put the pins in, but I didn't. Okay. I've had this die grinder for years. This is the first time I've ever used it. Yeah, it seems to be doing the trick. Now we're gonna head on over to the belt sander and work on getting this down to a shape that's actually usable.
really happy with the proportions on this, but it definitely needs to be sanded and polished. 150, 180, 240, 320, 400, 600, 800. These are the same grits, just in larger paper and smaller paper. Because I had the door open? Oh. Well, I thought that because there was a horn honking. Oh, that's fine. Honking horns. <laughs> it's California. I thought I was bleeding. I was like, oh no, I'm bleeding. But that's just the dye from earlier. <laughs> I'm just dyeing my fingers because it's still on the mat. Oh, right, it's still on the mat. I don't want it on this. All right, so mat's in the shop sink there, and we'll keep going without it. And on to the last grit, 800, and then we'll move over to polishing. Because this is definitely going to need a polish. Uh, the wet pads are what I use over at the lathe, but I'm going to use these big dry pads that I bought. Oh gosh, it's been a while. I think this was the secret wood ring was the what I purchased these for. That sounds right. But if you just work through the grits, you actually get a really nice polish on resin. And they do they do wear out. You do have to buy new ones at some point. Depends on how much you use them. And you start feeling like they're getting clogged up. Time to buy new ones, or when they start delaminating from the pad. Yeah, that's pretty cool looking. It's obviously a real knife. Oh, it's obviously a real knife. It does come pre-sharpened, and I know that because I cut myself. <laughs> 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 On the directions, it says wrap the whole thing in tape. And um, I agree. <laughs> you almost forget that it's a stabby thing. I think it's more that you forget that's ramen. Isn't that wild? It is strange looking though. I like the depth of it, how it... Yeah, that there's voids. It's not solid. Yeah, you can see them. I totally poke something with that. <laughs> I've never carried a knife in my whole life. I, I might carry a ramen noodle handled knife. It's hard to seem threatening when it's got ramen on it. <laughs> Pink ramen. Pink ramen. <laughs>